tough schedule means a lot of uh, prolific offenses to face for Florida State here in 2021. So that secondary is going to have to be up to speed. We got Logan Robinson on the line from No Game Day to break it down for us, looking at the corners and the safeties. Logan, how are we doing tonight, man? Doing fantastic. We just had our first scrimmage of the spring. So we might have a little insight on what to look at the defensive backs. So. Ready to talk some ball. We're getting close to the spring game on April 10th, so looking forward to talking some uh, defensive backs. Always fun at Florida State to talk DBs. That's right. The legacy's there, no doubt about that. One of the best in the nation at the very top. So to get you all set up with uh, who's moved on, it's, of course, Asante Samuel Jr., 97 total tackles in his career, four picks, 19 passes defense. You got Jalen Waters would be who came in with a big reputation, didn't necessarily fulfill it, but did have 106 tackles in his career and uh, really had a nice freshman campaign. And then it kind of went bad from there for him. Hamsa Nasrul Dean uh, had a huge 2019 season. Unfortunately, he wasn't on the field much here in 2020. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's the departures. Obviously, the big one here is Asante Samuel Jr. And I do think, yeah, Florida State's going to get hit hard because of uh, him leaving. The The thing with him, he came in with the strong mentality of getting to the league. Um, he was, you know, your regular kind of Florida State DB that it was chippy, likes to talk trash and spring practices early on before fall camp. And uh, his main focus, and he had tunnel vision, even with the coaching changes, really to get to the league. And he's going to do that. He's now projected as a late first round or early second round guy. Um, and so losing him is not going to be fun. And he had a few techie ways last year, too. Uh, going back to really Hamza Nazrul Dean is another player that just knew how to get around the ball and make tackles. And, you know, we didn't get to see him much last year due to injury and recovery. And there were some, you know, trying to figure out if he was going to play or not. Uh, he decided to get in there a little bit and still made a uh, presence felt. So Hamza Nazraldine, uh losing him isn't going to be uh, too great. And then Jaden Lars would be the biggest thing for him. You know, it was, it was really about his angles and, and finding where he needs to be at the best time. And that's something that uh, he had struggled with uh, at FSU. And uh, I think there was some miscommun- miscommunication with him and the team. And uh, he's now off at Boston College. So. Uh, a few decent uh, guys that we aren't going to see on the field next year. Obviously, Asante Samuel Jr. being the biggest one, and by far that is going to take Florida State for a ride there with the hit. But um, there is still talent there. Florida State always brings in talented DBs across the country, uh, and so that's what we'll be talking about here soon. Got uh, Logan Robinson on the line from Noel Game Day. Please check out uh, their platform. They got a lot of great stuff tracking Florida State football every day over there. And of course, lock it in right here as well. Voice of College Football. Please like, comment, share the videos out on social media and subscribe. Mm-hmm. That way, you know, we're going live. And if you have no idea that we go live every Wednesday at six o'clock with Logan and the boys talking Florida State football. That's the place to be again, Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern time. And of course, if you can't make it, you catch the replay. So with this uh, roster coming back at uh, the safety and corner positions, uh, who do you like coming back? There, there's a l- there's a good amount of guys, um, and definitely I, I get I get a like a little cheat. I'm kind of got like a little cheat sheet now after we had a first scrimmage mark because uh, we talked about that on our show this this Wednesday night, but. Uh, you know, coming in and was always going to be Travis Jay getting his second full year out there. He made some flashes last season. I think here's some situations where he can most certainly get better, definitely in takeaways, maybe in the right spot. Um, but I think this as a whole, not only are the players I'm looking forward or I'm keeping an eye on, but this coaching staff with Coach Woodson and Fuller, find out who needs to be where, what fits best. I think Florida State led into this last season, not knowing particularly who need to be in these areas we saw a lot of changes at cornerback uh while you know asante samuel jr held his own which you know that's asante samuel jr that is like we just talked about nfl product but you know they were trying to figure out who's going to be that number two guy opposite side of asante samuel jr that's not only if we're looking at this the players now heading into this but we got to keep an eye on this coaching staff and who they're going to be putting out there but Guys like Travis J at Jamie Robinson, physical, kind of going to be your nickel guy that came in saying he wants to be the most physical since, you know, he wants to be the most physical nickel that uh, has came in, has come into, for, come through Florida State. And that's not going to be easy to do if you're talking about a previous guy like LaMarcus Joyner. Uh, 
but Jamie Robinson, the transfer from uh, South Carolina. And then I'd probably look at some of these, you know, these guys that maybe, you know, aren't talked about as much, maybe a McGullion, a McGullion who transferred into Florida state. Um, Kevin Knowles also a, a name that, you know, Florida state, you know, has some high praise on. Um, I, th- I think there's maybe some sleeper guys that might come out of nowhere. I know Brandon Moore from what we've been hearing since the beginning of uh, sp- spring camp h- transferred, you know, practically in tandem with McKenzie Milton coming from UCF, who's coming back from injury. Uh, we've been hearing some great things about him. He's a chirpy guy. Um, not really the nicest, but don't really care if he's nice. It's football. Uh, and if you're a DB, if you're a lockdown corner, they're not usually too nice and it fits the mold for someone that wants to be really good. So I think there's a lot of names to be excited for. It is Florida state. They're always going to reproduce a defensive back, um, to note here, you know, we kind of got a cheat sheet here, but Demori Tate is why he would have been in my top three just now probably my top two actually. Cause I was like, predicting him to be the number two guy opposite of, he was going to be a, one of the starters, a corner uh, during the scrimmage. It seems like he's got a pretty big injury. He was carding or he not carding, but he was on a scooter during the spring scrimmage. So the first one, so we won't see much of Demory Tate this spring, but uh, there's a lot to talk about. Obviously I, I can ramble on cause I'm so excited. The DB room is always fun to talk about. So. Yeah, you mentioned Kevin Knowles. He comes in. Uh, he's already on campus early in Rule Lee. Mm-hmm. Comes in from Hollywood. A couple guys will come in in August. Um, may get a shot at some playing time, depending on how things roll there. But Hunter Washington, cornerback out of uh, Katy, Texas. Amari and Cooper, uh, defensive back as well. I don't know if he plays safety or corner, but uh, now he's listed as a corner coming uh, he's uh, he's from in-state. Uh, but again, those guys aren't going to be on campus until yeah. probably June uh, and, and suiting up in August, of course. Yep. No, there, there's definitely some more. That's a thing. You know, there's already a good amount of talent here and there's a lot of guys returning, but you're only bringing in more competition, competition, Hunter Washington, who a lot of people are high on, uh, that's going to have a chance. I think more of Marion Cooper is going to kind of be more of a mix of safety. You could maybe bring him down in coverage, uh, on slot, but he's just such a long, I think more of a longer guy. So those guys we won't see until fall camp, but, uh, this group right now uh, has got a lot of competition. I mean, you're fighting, you know, you're fighting for two starting jobs uh, at corner spots, which you don't really see a lot of. And, you know, the reason of that is because, like we said, the coaching staff coming into it, no spring, had a short time of fall camp, and then boom, you're into games. I think this really heavily affected this defensive back unit. Um, I think, you know, going to jobs that I think are, potentially solidified would probably be a Travis J slash Renardo green uh, could just of returning guys from FSU. Um, there's just so many, there's a good amount of transfers that have come in that are, have experience at the college level that are going to fight to try to get PT out of them. How does the safety uh, spot line up? Uh, do you think uh, that'll be pretty strong? I, I think, Definitely after looking at the spring scrimmage, the way that Florida State's going to want to use these guys, uh, definitely like a Jamie Robinson who just transferred from uh, South Carolina. They're, they're going to want to use him to jam up uh, whoever's on him. I mean, he's a physical guy. He, he said it in his press conference coming in. He's going to bring the physicality. But Jamie Robinson, I think, is going to be a big fit. You're bringing back Brendan Gant. We haven't even talked about him yet. I mean, there's so many names here. But Brendan Gant, another physical guy. Uh, that these two are going to be competing with one another um, between uh, positions. But uh, it all depends on, you know, where who fits over here. You know, you got Travis J, you got Renardo Green. Where do those four kind of mix the best? Um, it, it's really about the free safety spot um, and, and the other uh, position. It, it, it's going to be, I, I'm trying to do my math here and like try to go th- through what we saw last year, but you know, Travis J was more of a free safety along with Renardo Greens. You also got Sidney Williams, who might be a sleeper guy. Um, I think you know, there's just tons of talent there at safety. It's just really going to depend on who you're going to put where. And this is where the spring practice is really going to be huge for this second year coaching staff. Uh, definitely for Woodson and Adam Fuller. Where do these guys fit the mold best? Where's the chemistry lie with them? Um, and we'll see. The safety room, though, has a lot of competition ahead. And you saw Jamie Robinson flash that uh, physicality at the scrimmage, right? 
We did see Jamie Robinson really, really, really. He was the most physical guy on the line. Him and Bart Brownlee, I think, on the line, uh, jamming you right there, right off the bat. Those two guys are it fits the mold for Jamie's name. He's going to jam you right there on the spot. But not only that, but in coverage, he was the most locked down on Saturday during the scrimmage. He looked great in uh, red zone. Watched him throughout a whole entire play in the red zone uh, and created a great. A defensive uh, product and was not allowing uh, Jordan Travis uh, to find uh, six there. So um, then, you know, they got to see him go against Cameron McDonald, who laid a big hit on uh, Jamie, laid a big hit on Cameron uh, during this uh, spring scrimmage. And it, uh, it, Cameron McDonald's not a small cat either. So it goes to show Jamie Robinson is going to bring the physicality. I like the way that he was. Uh, and on coverage, I think that's something we'll keep an eye on going into the second scrimmage here on Saturday morning. But uh, Jamie Robinson, I think, uh, ha- has a has a bright future for a lot of PT uh, this upcoming season. A lot to figure out uh, at corner and especially safety for Florida State during their spring sessions. Uh, Logan took in the uh, first scrimmage. He's headed out uh, again for a second scrimmage on Saturday And uh, we'll have an eye on the secondary, definitely. So Logan Robinson from Knoll Game Day. So check out what they do over there. It is first rate, full throttle all the time. (laughs) Florida State football coverage. Good stuff there. Logan, we always appreciate you stopping by. Thank you. I appreciate you having me, Mark.